all this empty filament. But we got free filament in the Da Vinci Jr. It's Filament Friday. Let's print something. So I decided to print something at 0.1 layer height. That was a suggestion by a subscriber. And I'm printing this bearing right here that I found on Thingiverse. The problem is I needed to adjust the bed first. So it's printing right now and while it's printing I'm going to show you how I adjust the bed on a DaVinci Junior. And then when that's done I'll show you the results of this print and see how good it is. Okay so I mentioned in my last DaVinci Junior video I talk about leveling the bed and I proved that it was not level because the extruder was cutting into the tape on the bed and if you look closely you'll see here let me show you the bed is not level it's tight on one side or real close on one side and it's a bigger gap on the other side so that's a problem so I went to their manual to figure out how to adjust the bed and there really wasn't a whole lot there so then I looked on their website and it says right on their website say goodbye to calibration calibrating your 3d printer for prints can be a huge pain <laughs> then it goes on to say this simple and easy to use 3d printer and they're talking about the junior I'm on the junior page requires no calibration I mean this thing is not calibrated now I know I got a pre released unit I guess because I was missing some other things but if you get one like this and I've already had a few people contact me saying they're hearing the clicking sound I guarantee you that's what it is your bed's not adjusted right and there's no calibration so even though they claim no calibration and really nothing in the manual they do have a video on their website on their tutorial page for the Da Vinci Junior that shows x-axis calibration and what you have to do they suggest is you take the power supply and you put it on the bed and then bring the x-axis down on top of it and then you need to adjust it by loosening two screws and flattening that thing against this power supply so that's a manual calibration in my book but at least I got a video showing you how to do it here's the catch when I went to the jog mode utilities jog mode and then I go down to the z-axis and I want to adjust it 10 millimeters at a time I can only do it once and this is as high as it gets it's about I can maybe get my finger underneath it there is no way I'm getting this power supply to fit underneath it so I thought maybe I had an old software so I updated the software on this thing to the latest it still doesn't work so if you try to do this at home per their video I don't know how you do it at least mine won't do it so what I'm actually gonna do is I'm just gonna bring it down against the bed and I'm gonna adjust the screws against the bed get it flattened that way and then the next step is you have to manually go in and set the Z offset Now this is very similar to what a lot of other 3d printers do like repetier host and all that they have you set a Z offset now what I would have loved to have had is adjustment knobs because that's how I do my Z offset on my DaVinci 1.0 I adjust the knobs of the bed now I have to do it electronically so let me just do a few steps here I'll show you how to adjust it if you have one of these and you have this problem or if you buy one in the future and you have this problem I think this is the best way to fix it I've only had this a short time but it's kind of frustrating I'm doing a review and now I'm already showing you how to fix it but hey if I'm helping you guys out that's what it's all about so let me show you how to adjust it okay so I've lowered the x-axis as far as it'll let me go I use the the jog adjustment to get it down and there's still a little bit of a gap if I take their metal putty knife it just slides under on the right side and I move the extruder manually to the right to get it out of the way and now it's kind of trapped because the nozzle is low enough that it hits on the edge of the bed so now if I put it on the other side there's clearly a big gap so I'm gonna try and adjust this now to bring it down 
to where it's about even. And there's two screws. Slide this out of the way. There's one on the bottom down here, and there's one up here at the top. And it's a T10 Torx head. So I guess you just loosen these up. Man, those are tight. Probably be easier if I got this spool out of here. Man, I do not want to turn. Holy cow. Okay, so I was able to get a ratchet in here with a Torx end on it and loosen these up. They're pretty tight. And then what I tried to do is push this down to level it like they talk about. I mean they say to use the, the controls and let it drop down on the power supply. But this thing ain't moving. This whole side over here just moves up and down. So what I'm going to do is try to level it by shoving a screwdriver underneath it. So I'm just going to shove this underneath this side, prop it up, tighten these down and then let it sag and see if I can get it to level out. I'm just tightening them by hand right now because I don't want to strip anything out. And my Torx bit on my ratchet is not the best. But I really don't want to break anything. So now when I pull the screwdriver out, it sags. But you know what? Visually, it's pretty level. Let me show you. Now the video says to home the axis, which is what I did. It homed over here, and then you manually slide it across. And you take two sheets of paper and put that underneath it, and it should just barely touch. And what I notice is that on this side, it, I can feel it rubbing against the extruder, the bottom of it. On this side, it's rubbing, but just a little bit less but pretty close to the same. So I don't have it perfectly level, but I got it pretty close. I mean, with my screwdriver shoving it in there and the fact that you can't really move this thing, this thing is still, look at how loose this is. The weight of this extruder moving over is going to lower this thing no matter where it's at. So this, this support system they have here is kind of, kind of weak. So I don't think you can ever get it perfectly flat. But I'm pretty close to their two paper method. Now what I have learned from experience is two paper is too thick. So what actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to lower it just a little bit. Let's go home, utilities, Z axis, Z offset. It's set to 1.6 millimeters and you make it smaller it'll move it closer. So I'm just going to lower this to 1.5 millimeters. Click OK. And I don't even know how you test that. Honestly, I don't see it moving. I don't feel it moving. I think you just got to print. Because it feels the same when I do this. So if that Z offset is working, I don't know. So now the only way to really test it is I'm going to put a fresh piece of paper on it. And I'm going to run a print and see if it cuts into it that's the only way I'll know. So I'll rerun that sample print. Okay, so I put new masking tape is basically what this is, but it's not square. So you got to get it the right way. So make sure if you put one of these on, you get it in the right direction. Because if you get it in the wrong direction, it doesn't cover the, the bed and it hangs over on another part. Also, while I was doing this, the glass moved around a little bit. Not a lot. That's something to watch too. Because that that glass is just sitting in there and pinched between these, these clamps. 
So it can move a little bit and that will affect your prints. But anyway, it's ready to go. So all I got to do is get the SD card, which I have at my computer, plug it in and then I can run the sample print. Okay, it's warmed up and it's putting down the first strip. Right now it doesn't look like it's cutting into the tape. The question is, is it too far away? You know, is, is it sticking? Now PLA sticks pretty easy, so it should be less of an issue than the ABS on the DaVinci 1.0. You see the test strip is right here and I can touch it and it's not moving. And it's not cutting into the tape. And you can kind of see the new print coming down. It's laying down that first layer and it's not cutting into the tape. So I may have this adjusted perfectly. We'll see once it's there if it uh, stays on the bed. But from what I can tell, it's looking pretty good. I still think I'd adjust the Z-axis a little tighter to squish it down more. And it's a little hard to tell with this clear plastic. You almost want to use a colored plastic to see this. Sorry I'm jumping around here, but I want to be able to see what's going on. But overall, this looks pretty good. We'll see how the print turns out. So if you looked at the bottom of that time lapse, you can see the bottom of the print spinning. So I guess 1.5 wasn't the right setting for the Z offset. It allowed the thing to spin, but it didn't tip over. It created a really interesting print. It's all spiral. So that didn't work. So then I set it to the 1.3 offset. So I jumped a bunch and went from 1.5 down to 1.3 based on this. And the result, was perfect. Now I just took it off. This looked real easy, but it almost lifted that easy. I just gave it a little tweak and it was came right off. So I think that's the perfect setting for this now. I probably could go 1.2 if I wanted to stick a little better, but right now I'm sticking with 1.3. So after setting the bed, I had to change my Z offset from 1.6 down to 1.3. And now it's ready to print good. So that's how I adjusted the bed. So now let's check on that bearing that I started at the beginning of the video. So the print is done. And I gotta tell you, this looks really, really good. Just pops right off. There's some support on the bottom. But it's moving. So let me clean up some more of this uh, support material and I'll show you a close up. If I really need to take a Dremel to the bottom of these balls, but the tops of them are very, very round and it actually works like a bearing. I'm really impressed with the quality of this print. So there you have it, a $349 printer, and it printed very good. This is a very good print from what I can tell. Now I haven't printed this on ABS on the 1.0, but it's a better quality than I've seen, definitely at 0.1 layer height. So I don't know if it's the PLA or it's just the print is just that much better, I don't know. So I'll, I'll do some more testing, but overall, this is pretty impressive for a, a low cost printer. So that's all I've got. If you like this episode, give it a thumbs up. If you like my channel, please subscribe. That way I know you're watching. And if you want to see more videos like this and you want to help support the channel, just click on my Patreon link right up here. Every little bit helps. It really does. Especially to replace all that filament that I had early at the beginning. So that's it for now. I'll probably have some more DaVinci Jr. before I have to send it back. But until next time, I'll see you.